Hi, everyone. I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and today is Tuesday, January the 14th. We're in the midst of winter across the southeast United States, well, the northern hemisphere, but us particularly here. We've been having some cold temperatures, and right now the sky is clear. The temperature's still chilly and only in the middle 50s this afternoon. Now, there have been some disagreements with the computer models over the last several days. As a matter of fact, they have been bouncing all over the place uh, as to what is expected to happen next week along about Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, the models have been, uh, as I said, bouncing around and not getting a handle on this. But today's run, the models are be becoming more and more al in a line with each other as to p the potential of what could happen coming up next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But the models are also very much in agreement what's going to happen Saturday and Sunday, and that is a boatload of rain across Georgia and South Carolina. We're talking over an inch of rain potential here in the greater Savannah area, Statesboro, Hinesville, down to Brunswick, over to Hilton Head and Bluffton. Buford, a lot of rain on the way for Saturday. Temperatures, though, will be relatively mild in the upper 50s, even perhaps lower 60s for them. But then things begin to change. Well, right now, the sky is clear, and uh, you have an, one last chance to view Venus and Saturn up in the southwestern sky. There it is. Uh, let's take a look at it with the uh, this program here called Stellarium. There is Saturn and Venus uh, for tonight. And if you look, they're getting closer and closer to each other. And uh, over the next uh, couple of nights, this is tonight. Uh, this will be Wednesday night, but it'll be cloudy, so you probably won't see it. And this is Thursday night. Venus and Saturn are right side by side up in the sky. You might see it uh, on Friday night uh, right there. But uh, anyway, the two planets, Venus is the brightest pl uh, star planet in the sky, only to be outshone by the sun and the moon. Meanwhile, further away, uh, you do have uh, Jupiter high up in the sky, uh, very bright, but not as bright as Venus, but still the fourth brightest object in the sky, the uh, sun, moon, Venus, then Jupiter. And then the fifth brightest object in the sky, where is it? Mars over here uh, in the uh, east, south, east, northeastern sky. Uh, after about 10 o'clock at night, you should be able to see uh, the ruddy red appearance of Mars. This is the best Mars is going to look for this year. And a closer view of the uh, the moon from, well, last night I didn't get much to see because of the cloud cover. Uh, the moon was expected to pass, it did pass right over uh, Mars in appearance in the sky. And uh, however, I couldn't get it because the sky was totally cloudy here. Uh, I did catch the moon though the night before, uh, the uh, almost full moon. You tell me if that's not a full moon, almost full moon, the wolf moon of January. And then, as we mentioned earlier, on the other side of the uh, sky, the uh, planet Venus, uh, along with Saturn, uh, there is a view of Venus through my telescope I picked up on Sunday night, uh, looking at Venus uh, through the uh, telescope, giving a, an appearance of a half moon. Actually, it's, a, it's a, a, a waning crescent now, Venus. Venus and Mercury put on phases just like the moon because they're inner planets, and we're looking at them inside the orbit, so they do uh, exhibit phases. Um, Galileo discovered that back in 1610, I think it was 1610, uh, he first discovered the phases of Venus. Anyway, let's get off of this and let's talk about the weather because the weather is very important right now. Now here's the satellite view from this afternoon. We're starting to see some thin trails of cirrus clouds stream into the area off of this system over here in eastern Texas and the western Gulf of Mexico. That's eventually going to form into a low pressure system and uh, move into our area for uh, Saturday and Sunday, dropping lots of rain. I want to show you this up to the north. Uh, this right here, that's snow on the ground from Kansas over into uh, the northern half of Missouri, Illinois, almost all of Illinois, Indiana, covered with uh, snow on the ground. So is Ohio. Well, actually, that's Illinois. There's Indiana there. Ohio, you can't, can't see too much because of cloud cover there, but also to the north in Minnesota and Wisconsin, lots of snow cover on the ground there. Still can't see the Great Lakes. It's been covered with clouds. Uh, I was looking to see if I could see any ice on the Great Lakes states, uh, Great Lakes, uh, or on the Great Lakes states. But there is a little ice I can think I see over near Chicago on Lake Michigan. Yeah, that's ice on the shoreline of Lake Michigan in the southwest uh, Lake Michigan area. But over to the east, can't see too much out there due to the cloud cover. All right. Uh, 
let's take a look further south. Most of the not yeah, just most of the snow has melted across Georgia, a little bit extreme northeast portion of Georgia, and up in the mountains of North Carolina. Still got some snow on the ground out there. And then as you go up into uh, West Virginia and Virginia, you're still seeing some snow in the higher elevations out there. All right, let's go on to the models because that's what everybody wants to be talking about and 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 is interested about. This is today's model, uh, the GFS, the Global Forecast System, the United States model. And the last couple runs, actually last couple days, the last several runs, has been indicating a rain system coming in for the weekend. And there it is right there. This is for uh, Saturday sunset. And we have quite a bit of rain moving across uh, Georgia and South Carolina. And then going into Sunday, a little bit more, another wave develops and comes up across the area. This is sunrise on Sunday, still moderate to heavy rains, particularly in the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina. And then that moves out uh, during the uh, uh, overnight hours into Monday. And then going into Monday, some cold air starts flowing in uh, across the area. Large area of high pressure coming in from the northwest up in the Montana area. That's going to be pumping down lots of cold air across the eastern portion of the country, including the southeast United States. All right, let's go ahead and, and put this model forward. And uh, there it is, something developing over here, uh, um, over in the southern Texas and the western Gulf of Mexico, with a large swath of snow across Texas into southern Oklahoma, again into Arkansas with freezing rain just to the north of it across eastern Texas and uh, southern portion of Louisiana moving into southeast Mississippi. And as we advance in time, uh, it starts spreading across into west southwestern Georgia at this time. This is for um, 1 o'clock Tuesday afternoon, according to the GFS. And then it shows a large area of rain, freezing rain, across just about all of Georgia into uh, South Carolina with a band of snow off to the north. Uh, I'd rather have snow any day versus freezing rain. But this one looks like a freezing rain event uh, that could develop. Now, the, the global forecast system has been indicating this possibility over the last uh, two or three days now, but the other models have not. The, um, the Canadian models, the CMC, uh, for that time frame shows nothing going on. High pressure to the north and uh, going into time. It, it tries to bring something in a little bit later. This is Thursday afternoon with some freezing rain across basically around Interstate 16 northward and keeps it that way uh, just south of Interstate 16 on Friday at sunrise. But let's take a look at the um, ECMWF because the last several runs on it showed nothing going on around here. And here's the, uh, the model itself right now. And let's put this into motion. And first of all, that rain for Saturday, that's coming in. Yep, it agrees with the other models, a rain on Saturday. Perhaps over an inch of rain on Saturday could fall in our area and then lingers into Sunday, and then going into Monday for partial clearing. Uh, cold air, yeah, it's showing the cold air being funneled down by the north uh, from this large area of high pressure uh, in the northeast portion of Montana, and that's going to pump some very cold air into our area. And then going ahead into time, uh, this is now for uh, Tuesday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, there's Tuesday at uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon and Tuesday sunset. And look at that. A lot of area of frozen precipitation across Georgia and South Carolina. It's not snow. It's either sleet or freezing rain, which is, again, as I mentioned, I'll take snow any day over freezing rain. Freezing rain has a tendency to uh, accumulate on, on tree, tree limbs and power lines. And a lot of times you get... Um, uh, a lot of power outages when you're dealing with freezing rain. So this model here is not looking good whatsoever for us. And it's in agreement now with the GFS model. And then it goes away. And uh, colder air behind it, uh, the GFS is forecasting much colder air. The ECMWF, not so cold behind it. It's cold enough, but not, not horribly cold. All right, let's take a closer look at this. And this is the icing of forecast and this is based on the uh, GFS model here. Uh, this is for Tuesday at uh, five uh, or t 10 o'clock in the morning and then going into the next uh, 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 sequence at one o'clock in the afternoon 
and then going into two or two, three, four, four, five, five o'clock in the afternoon, and then sunset on Tuesday right here shows a large band of ice across Louisiana, southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Alabama, into southwestern Georgia, getting into south central portions of Georgia. This is for Wednesday at 20, at zero, well, that's Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Let's continue to move forward in time and going into um, Wednesday at one o'clock in the morning, Wednesday at sunrise, look at this swath of freezing rain across a large portion of central and southern Georgia, now moving into southeastern South Carolina. Carolina. Let's go in another uh, frame of uh, time. This is uh, for Wednesday at uh, three o'clock in four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, and then uh, four o'clock in the morning. And then this is Wednesday at sunrise right here. You got a large area of frozen precipitation across Georgia and South Carolina. And uh, one more shows a large area of frozen precipitation, freezing rain and sleet across the, uh, the region. All right, um, that was the GFS. The ECMWF basically is now showing the same thing. And look at that and for the same time frame uh, for um, uh, sunrise on Wednesday. Let's go one more uh, frame in advance. This will be at uh, 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday morning and then one o'clock Wednesday afternoon. It shows a large area of total accumulated of ice across the region. We could see potential over an inch of ice accumulation if these models are right. And that's a big if because anytime uh, during the winter time, particularly when you go beyond five days, uh, you're looking at iffy, iffy situations. Uh, the models can bounce around and really change over that time period. Uh, and this is now seven and eight days, nine days in advance. So uh, anything could change. But right now, I want to show you the potential is there for the potential for a well, it looks like it could be a major ice storm across the southeast United States. And that includes us here in southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. All right, let's go into the forecast. My webpage, savannahpat.name, Savannah Pat and uh, well, we have the sunshine today. We're going to be partly cloudy to, um, tomorrow and uh, Thursday into Friday, increasing clouds on Friday, then rain Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, you know, got the rain coming in. And then I don't go beyond uh, the, this is six days. I don't go, let's see, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. <laughs> okay. Yeah, today is Tuesday, not Wednesday. Today is Tuesday. So I go uh, a seven day forecast there. And, and these two days are stretching it as well, particularly during the winter months. And the outlook, uh, the outlook is a different thing. It's not a forecast. It's the average of weather conditions over the week in, in question, like week one, week two. You could have temperatures, uh, you know, a few degrees above normal one day and several degrees below normal for a couple of days. So the average would be below normal. And that's what we're seeing uh, for next, well, for the, uh, through January 21st, seeing potential for below normal and above normal precipitation. I think the precipitation forecast is spot on on this one. And then on week two, again, Again, below normal temperatures, uh, still a moist uh, uh, rainfall, slightly above the normal. Normal rainfall at this time of the year is a, a little bit long, more than three quarters of an inch, 84 hundredths of an inch per week. And then going into week three, which is now the end of January, we're getting back to around normal weather conditions, temperature-wise and, and precipitation-wise. And then going into week four, around normal for the temperature. Week five and six, we're going through like February 12th through the 25th maybe above the normal on the average for those two weeks. So we'll be warming up and, and the normal starts warming up too as the uh, uh, progresses in time, 65 for the normal high uh, for uh, February 12th and February 19th, 67 is normal high and we'll be above that. So we're looking at temperatures in the 70s. All right, okay, with that being said, yeah, yeah, look up at the sky, and there's the Venus. You, you can't miss Venus, and it's brilliantly bright right now. It's the brightest it's going to get for the rest of the year. And then Saturn is a dull yellow small dot just to the upper left of the planet Venus. So enjoy the views of the sky tonight. The moon doesn't rise until about 7 o'clock tonight. And uh, we'll keep an eye on this weather pattern for you. And again, thanks to all those who have been supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. And those super thanks are very, very nice as well. Uh, very kind, as a matter of fact. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.